Good evening. We are excited about this evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome families of God, people of God, whether you're listening live or via replay, we are excited about the word of God and what he is doing in and through our lives. Uh, we are excited about particularly this evening, again, wherever you are connecting with us from around the planet, we're excited about you uh, just joining our family. We knew that there was going to be a Super Bowl this evening, but uh, it was it is not even um, a comparison, not even a close match to a supernatural Bible study. And so it's fine if you want to uh, connect with us via replay. It still will be powerful. We have been walking out the acts. It's the acts of the apostle, but we know it's the acts of Holy Ghost. And it has been um, just exciting. Um, those who have been following our family over the years, you're able to go back and walk out the book of James, the book of Hebrews. We were in the book of Hebrews for almost a year. And our family has also walked out the gospels. So you can come alongside us with your digital devices, your, your word, with your, your notes. And if you have feedback, you have prayer requests, um, questions, please feel free to submit them at www dot espresso faith that's e s p r e s s o f a i t h at gmail.com we would love to link our faith up with yours according to the word of god for an answer for you so i just want to introduce the family that we have present here today um we have dad stanley good evening good evening we have mom stanley good evening Awesome. We have Regina Simmons. Good evening. Good evening. We have Darnesia Slade. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. And we have the beautiful Trevon, Trevon Clifton joining us, our family this evening. We're excited about her supply of the spirit. How you doing, sis? I'm doing great. Thank you all for having me tonight. Awesome. You are always welcome. Um, my sister, uh, Dr. Sherry, is traveling today. And so we just uh, wish her safe travels. The angels are surround round about her. She'll be back with us next week. And I am Siobhan Stanley. And we always open up with prayer. And so I'm going to turn it over to my sis, Dar. Go ahead and, uh, and lead us, dear. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to get into your word, to seek your word, to seek your understanding, your righteousness, your way of doing things. We thank you, Father, that we have an opportunity to uh, dig deeper into the person of Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit tonight as the comforter, the role of comforter. And with that, Father, I want to pray for the nine victims that. Um, whose lives were lost in the crash last week. So we lift up these, uh, the families of these victims, Kobe Bryant, Gianna Bryant, Peyton Chester, Sarah Chester, Christina Mauser, Alyssa Autobelly, Autobelly, John Autobelly, Carrie Autobelly, and Ara Zabanyan. And we just pray, Father, for the comforter to be with each and every one of these families. We know, Father, that um, this can be seemingly a difficult time, a time of not understanding what has happened and not understanding or how to process what has happened. So we pray, Father, for the comforter, Holy Spirit, to be with each and every one of these families. We thank you, Father, for every listener tonight. We believe and agree that they will hear something tonight to revolutionize their lives, to transform their understanding of who you are to them in their personal relationship with you. So we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for what you will do tonight in this Bible study. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Excellent. Dar, thank you for calling each and every one of their names out in prayer. I, I believe it's important. I think that... Um, you know, we know how Kobe Bryant's uh, death may have individually um, impacted us, but we didn't want what was happening with him and his family overshadowed that there were others on that helicopter as well. And there's other people who are hurting and who are grieving um, too. And um, I just, um, I, today, my mom sent out a really beautiful tribute to our entire family. Today marked 20 years of our grandmother, 
um, uh, just a huge personality, matriarch of our family. She uh, went home to be with the Lord today, 20 years. And I really appreciated that tribute you sent out to the entire family, that mom. It was absolutely gorgeous. And one of the things that I responded, it was like, a really huge group text. And you know how much I love group text, Ma. But uh, it was, I put in there, we will see her again. And that brings comfort when you know where somebody going, you ain't got to roll the dice and guess. And people are always really quick to put somebody in heaven, but she led a life that was yielded and committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, that brings me comfort. That brings me great peace. I know that we've been walking out the book of Acts and we know how we started off walking out those first initial scriptures. Jesus was with them. He was telling them, uh, teaching about the kingdom. He stayed with them for 40 days in the beginning of Acts. And he talked about um, how, you know, I, it is, I have to go away because there's a comforter coming. There's a, why do we need comfort? He knew that they were going to have trouble uh, being able to, I've been walking with you intimately, teaching you, instructing you. And then I'm gone, you know, but no, I'm actually going to be with you. I have someone that's going to not talk about himself, but he will dwell within you and will talk and speak of me. And I think it is awesome. And, and you'll be effective witnesses for me. So he did not leave them by themselves. And I remember when we looked at Acts chapter one, it was verse 11. And I want to read it really quickly before I open it up to the family. And it says in verse 11, um, well, let's back it up to verse 10. So Acts chapter one, verse 10. And while they were all gazing intently up into heaven because a cloud came and carried Jesus away, um, behold, two men dressed in white robes suddenly stood beside them and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? This, this same Jesus who was caught away and lifted up from among you into heaven will return in just the same way in which you saw him go into heaven. And so I pause right there because they adjusted their focus. It needs to be on what it is, the instructions that Jesus had given you. You are focused in the wrong direction. And he help came even in that instance to get them. What was the last thing he said to do? Head to Jerusalem and go up to the upper room and wait. And so I um, want to turn it over to the family. We have been talking about the inside man, talking about the person of Holy Ghost. And I don't want to, um, I know we said we could be a lifetime on the person of the Holy Ghost because it's God. It is him. And um, we are walking it out, um, the continuation of the ministry of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've been delving into some really powerful things. We saw when the Russian mighty wind came upon them in that upper room and how they flowed as the spirit gave them utterance speaking in other tongues and the timing of God was just perfect when all these nations were present and 3,000 souls were added just in that day. And what happened? We saw the um, oneness and the assembly, how they continually praise God. And so I want to turn it over to you guys, specifically what rose up out of your spirit. I know particularly um, Trevon, uh, uh, you know, you have been walking out ministry in and I want, I want you to tell your testimony specifically around how God upheld you, how uh, the person of Holy Ghost as comforter specifically means to you as well. Okay. Well, uh, again, I'm glad we started off uh, acknowledging what took place um, this past Sunday um, and all the families. Um, it's really important because of the impact uh, that uh, it has had on our nation, not just our nation, globally, in our culture. And um, we have to make sure that when we engage our culture, that we uh, look at the things that impact us all. And, and when it comes to grief, when it comes to pain and sorrow, that is something that connects each and every human being because none of us escapes uh, that experience. And so uh, for me, I went through a long period of uh, different family members uh, passing away. Um, it really started in 2015 when my grandfather passed of uh, pancreatic cancer. And it just seemed to kind of pick up from there. Um, I had an, another cousin that passed away unexpectedly uh, December 2016. And um, we also had uh, on my husband's side, uh, we had twins born into our family. And one of the twins passed away at eight months. Uh, and then shortly after that, 
my husband's uh, mother passed. And six months after my mother-in-law passed in 2017, my grandmother passed on January 5th, which was my mother's mother. Uh, in between there, her sister passed on the day of the wake my, my. For, my, for my grandmother. And then my mother passed uh, 15 days after her mom. And, um, and then we, just three weeks from there, my grandmother's other sister, the oldest of, the, of all of the children, passed away. And when I thought that was going to be it, my last uh, grandparent, my grandmother, my dad's mom passed away on Good Friday of 2018. And, you know, I'm only sitting here today because of uh, the role of the Holy Spirit um, in my life, uh, but also the importance of community. Um, it's, it's so important to have the right people around you. Um, grief can put you in a place where you uh, desire to be alone or you desire to be disconnected from people because you think sometimes nobody will understand. Um, also, you sometimes feel like you don't want your grief to be contagious. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that's upbeat. I think, I think I'm a pretty lively person. And when I experienced all those multiple deaths, um, it put me in a place where um, I felt like you know, nobody would really want to hear the grief that I really carried for those uh, for those deaths, and particularly those six deaths that happened in a nine month period of time. You know, uh, Proverbs eighteen and fourteen reads: um, "A man's spirit will endure sickness, but who can bear a crushed spirit?" Ooh, and it asked that question because um, humanly, although we can empathize with one another, no human being is created to carry the entire load and burden and grief and sorrow of another human being. And the only person who was actually able to do that for everyone was Jesus Christ. Uh, and so that was his, his example uh, to us that he was able to bear that entire burden um, of those who, <laughs> who had already came, those who were there and those who are to come. And when we, we think of it, I mean, he, he bore it for all eternity and that is just absolutely amazing. And so Hallelujah. when you, you go from there, um, we look at who he sent us uh, and he sent us the Holy Spirit and we have to make sure that we honor him and respect him for who, who he is. He's not some bottom basement discount God, you know, my, my. he is equally as important, equally as powerful as uh, because he is a part of the Godhead. Yes. He was present from the beginning when God said, let us make man. He was not an afterthought of God, just like neither of us are an afterthought um, with God. So um, when all of those things happen, you know, the Lord had told me, you know, I would not be overtaken if I let him take over. And Hallelujah. It's one thing to have that revelation. It's a totally different thing to start to put it in practice. And yes. it was difficult. It was difficult sometimes. I'm an only child. Uh, so I felt uh, very much alone in, uh, in what I experienced in uh, losing my mother and my grandmother as so, so close and um, feeling like I didn't have that, those siblings to, to share, to share that with, or, you know, yeah, someone that I knew came from my mom, you know, but um, I could always turn to the Holy Spirit and be ever so truthful and raw with my emotions and never be rejected, never be turned away. Um, and I have to admit, you know, I've said some things that I would I would never say in, in front of another human being. <laughs> I, I just I just wouldn't. I don't even think that another human being could really hear the things that I had to say. And I wasn't sure if if if, if the Lord was going to receive what I had to say. Uh -huh. But I'm so grateful to know that I'm his child. And so as his child, he wanted me to come. Yeah. He was drawing me to himself. Hallelujah. Just every time, just even with the little bit that I would, would give. 
And, you know, and I don't know why, you know, sometimes, I don't know, I guess sometimes we treat, we treat God as if he's human, you know, um, there are sometimes people who might get tired of us, you know, and might screen our call and say, you know, okay, I can't, I can't talk to this person today because I got my own stuff that I'm dealing with. And that's just real life. But we don't get that in, with our relationship with the Father. We don't get that in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is our comforter. He is the one that walks alongside us in affliction. Yes. He is the one that brings up, um, like uh, Siobhan mentioned earlier, you know, he testifies of Jesus Christ. So he, so he reminds us of what Jesus said, that he would be with us um, until the end uh, of the age. He reminds us um, that we have um, these uh, weapons uh, of Holy. warfare, you know, that are not carnal. You know, um, death in and of itself cannot be captured. Yes. You know, it can't be, it can't be held. It's, it's, it's a spiritual warfare, you know, and if, and when we don't have the perspective of who Christ is um, and how he won the victory for us, then death can be very oppressive, you know? Yes. And so when we look at the testimony of Jesus and how it says that he was a, a man of sorrow acquainted with grief, um, it talked about, how, it's really talking about how the pain and sorrow was revealed to him. And then you look at that word grief, it is connected to sickness, it's connected to disease, anxiety, calamity, malady. It's, and it's because it was never really part of God's design. You know, yes. death is, is a result of sin. Mm -hmm. And so it was never <clears throat> God's design for us to experience it. So here is Jesus who came to deliver us from the, from experiencing the eternal death, the punishment of, of sin. Yes. And so somewhere along the lines, I began to shift my focus because I had to realize that my mother confessed Christ. My grandmother confessed Christ yes, and, and they lived uh, in a way to show me that they believed that they were going to be okay once yes. they left this earth. And yes. so I had to start, you know, I even went to grief therapy and I say that and to me, that's important to say, because uh, sometimes uh, when, when people hear us talk about the relationship with the Holy Spirit, some people people start to feel bad that they need a little bit more help. Like if they need to go to therapy and I tell people all the time, I said, I, I didn't check the Holy spirit at the door. When I went into grief therapy, he was yes. with me even then because the role of my, my counselor, my human counselor, if you was not to be the, is not to become the Holy spirit for me, but to continue to point me towards the Holy spirit and yes. what he's doing in my life as a result of me experiencing uh, these separations. And I, you know, and I started to see that these separations, these are temporary. And I had to start thinking, I said, you know what, my, what better hands would I want my mother, my grandmother, my aunts to be in, but then to be in the hands of God, to be in his presence. Holy and I said, so, you know, I really, if, I, if there are tears to come, it's only because I miss them in the way that I have always known them. And that is an yes. adjustment. But I, but um, it was two years ago today. So January is a, wow. is a, a big month for uh, my family. It's a hard month. We've had a lot, of, a lot of deaths. And my mother passed away on January 20th. And I began to ask the Lord. I said, you know, I know this is my, my second cycle of experiencing it. And, 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 and let me also be transparent to say that coming into the new year, um, did not, did not feel good because I was, I had this anticipatory, uh, feeling of what January 20th, 20, 2020 was going to be. And also my mother gave her life to the Lord on, in a new year's Eve service. And so that was always big for us. We would just call, you know, we'd call each other, you know, and I would tell her happy birthday, you know, because that was her spiritual birthday. And one of the things that the Holy spirit has been reminding me is that, you know, that's not just only her spiritual birthday, you know, but that's also the day that she really died. Transition. Yes. 
that that you know when we when we look at it through the eyes of scripture when we confess the lord as our savior then that becomes the day that we really die it's not that it's not really the day that the the last time we take our breath the day that we said that jesus is lord yes that we are his that's really the day that we die because then that's the day that we begin to live for him and we learn to live for him and so he just began to just to just to help me process process that grief and when this week came uh the, when we got the news about the multiple deaths uh it was a trigger of sorts but because i had been actively asking the asking the holy spirit to help me and to walk me through th- what i was feeling and to remind me that I don't have to carry it because he said that we are able to cast our cares upon him yes. because he cares for us. And he really does mean all of it. I There was none of it that I had to carry. And the more I released to him, the more that things became light for me. So I was able to pray through and pray for those families and, act, and, and sense um, their grief and I could honestly intercede because there was a time when uh, I, I couldn't do that I was so <laughs> full of grief that I could not really even pray for other people because I had multiple deaths and I would remember asking God like when would this get better will it ever get better when would this heaviness lift uh, from me and you know there's uh, um, in Psalm 34 when it talks about um, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver him out of them all. Uh, it's, it's so true. And his word is so true. Um, and that's, and that's really what my testimony is. I had to really get to the point where I, I, I honored the Holy spirit for who he is in my life. And knowing that no matter how I felt, I could have feelings of loneliness, but the truth is I'm not alone and he is always with me. And, you know, between the word of God and the community that um, that's even present here, um, Siobhan was a, was a huge part. God would just place people. uh, And I met Siobhan through Darnesia and, and here I am walking um, into the bank and I run into Siobhan handling, handling business. And uh, she and God would just do that strategically place people uh, yeah. on my path for however long that period was just to say, listen, I did not forget about you. I am here. I know the pain that you're Hallelujah. going through and I'm and I'm going to show you, you know, I'm going to show you that I haven't forgotten, forgotten about you. I'm going to show you that I'm here with you. I'm going to show you that I heard your prayer because mm. now here is somebody that is tangible, even though. You know, we have the Holy Spirit. All of us sometimes long for to see something manifested that God heard us. And we are his ambassadors. We are his representatives. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm in a place where God has healed my heart and I can start to hear now for other people and be a witness to other people that are going, you know, going through it. (laughs) So that's, have, amen. So that's, it. that's exactly what I was going to say. Excellent. Go ahead, Ma. <laughs> I was going to say that God brought you through this, the Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit living inside of you to be a testimony for someone else that needs to hear this. A lot of people going through the pain of um, uh, losing loved ones in a tragic way. Yes. But you they just died of natural causes these people have you know someone might have stabbed them or shot them or something Mm -hmm. and and the grief there you're able to minister to them god has prepared you and and put you in a place to position yourself to minister to people because this is what we as servants of god is supposed to do amen minister to those that are hurting uh, bring them into the fold so that the devil doesn't scoop them right up out of here and they not realize the goodness and the mercy that God yes. can bring them through too. Amen. 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 
Um, did anyone? I had. Oh, go ahead, Dad. I had something I wanted to add, but go ahead, Dad. Uh, you can go ahead. Oh, Regina, did you have something? I got a few things, but you can go ahead. No, go ahead first, because I'm gonna. I'm no, gonna you go ahead. <laughs> no, you know. Okay. Go, go ahead, let me talk. go. Yeah, hey, no, I'm looking at my notes, and, and there's Yo, a couple sister. of different directions. Go ahead, go ahead, Regina. A couple of different things that I could pick up about that. Um, but she was talking about, you know, um, you know, just the spirit of heaviness that people feel and how, you know, God delivered her out of that, how she was able to, you know, walk through by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Um, looking back at, um, well, you can look at chapter three, Acts chapter three, verse 19, um, where it talks about the times of refreshing. You can look at that. You can also look at um, Acts chapter two, uh, verse uh, where is it? 39. Um, no, that's not the one I want. Oh, yeah. Well, a around verse 38, it talks about, no, I want to go verse 37. It talks about being pricked in your heart and having that um, sorrow and be having that encounter with Christ. And, you know, we go through different things. We experience it, whether it's grief or whatever. And it is like a yoke on us. It's a burden. It's something heavy. And then the, the Holy Spirit, as it talks about in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, the Holy Spirit brings that refreshing, removes that burden, removes that yoke. Mm. And that is one of the benefits of um, having the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and having him on the inside of you. You don't have to be burdened um, with these things. You know, even if it's just sin, you know, um, whatever type of bondage it might be, you know, where it talks about sin being a snare and us being entangled with it, but the Holy Spirit is able to break that. The word talks about his burden being, his yoke being easy and his burdens light. It's a comparison, you know, um, mm -hmm. when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you kind of do go through these things on your own and you don't have to. Mm -hmm. That's the benefit of the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm going to stop there because I've got some other things, but I don't want to get too far off. Dad, I'm going to let you go, and then I'm going to go after you. Well, as I listen to my sister, a couple of things come to mind. You never know how you're going to react and respond to grief. We know all the formulas. We know all the conversation. We know all the promises. We know we got hope because we believe in God. But we live in these bodies. We live in these plants of emotions, and it'll catch you by surprise. And like she said, the enemy... You know, he's whispering and um, what we see on the commercial ways, they don't offer much hope. And like she, like she said, you can find yourself really going down a, in a downward spiral. Absolutely. I think about sometimes, and I can't really think of one specific, but the peace of God can actually drop on you. Yeah. You, can, you can be enveloped by the peace of God. And there's this book by Dave Robers, Roberson. Yeah, it's about the walk of the spirit, walk of the power, walk of the spirit. And it talks about um, interfacing with the Holy Ghost as one of the benefits that we have as we pray in the Holy Ghost and what it can do for us. You know, uh, he's a comforter. He's an advocate. He's a strengthener, a helper. He is a standby. He is um, the intercessor. He's a teacher, you know, and all of these things. And I believe, I believe it happens indeed. As we pray in the Holy Ghost, all of a sudden, uh, something dawns upon you. There's something you know. There's a perspective you have. And I like what you said about you go to the psychiatrist or you go to get counseling, what have you, but you don't leave the Holy Ghost out of it. And a lot of times, other folk or other saints can help you get right back in line so the Holy Ghost can do all that it wants to do. And um, I'm telling you, when that peace drops on you, I mean, we I would not give up praying the Holy Ghost. I think about the scripture, a couple of scriptures, and I'll be quick. I think it's Isaiah 57, 19. He says, I create the fruit of the lips. And uh, I believe that relates to the Holy Ghost. And that's Isaiah. Isaiah talks about uh, stammering tongues. And uh, he's a prelude to the spirit of God being uh, available to us. And if he's creating the fruit of the lips, and if we're believing him, like you said, as I talk to him, as I talk to him, probably, probably in a way I can't talk to you. As I talk to him and I hear what's being said and he's creating fruit of my lips, as I'm petitioning him, he says that there's a return. He says, I create the fruit of the lips. You don't know how to worship me, how to praise me. You don't know how to approach me. But as I create fruit on their lips, there is a return. All of a sudden, peace. All of a sudden, healing. You know? And I believe that that, that is axiomatic. I believe that's one of the principles 
that we should stand on. You know, when you don't know what to say, how to put it in words, and you know you need help, and I'm going to be alone, I'm going to do this thing because I got to get myself right before I interface with these other folk because I know they ain't going to understand, and I got to be so that they can't pick up that this situ situation is happening. God will drop his peace on you. It's right. available to us. The other thing I think that we get encouragement about when we're going through grief, again, it happens to you. I, I experienced from time uh, before my father died. My father died in 2018. And my mother died in 2019. My brother died in 2017. My, mother, my father died in 2018. It was like bang, bang, bang. 2017, 2017, 2018, 2019. I was still working and I broke down away from the guys. What I thought was when your mother and your daddy leave here, the last vocal representation that your ballot is gone. I mean, they can check your DNA. You can get some records. You got some licenses and birth certificates. But the last vocal validation you have is gone. And I found myself breaking down. So stuff can hit you, emotion, we live in this flesh. And Jesus can be touched by the feeling of our incapacities, by the Amen. feeling of our infirmities, and he can drop that piece on you like nothing else. I'm gonna read this scripture because here's the other thing that gives me hope. And you said this too, that I, and I just recently went to a, a meeting for a ministry that's about to start. And the brother talked about reaching the community. He says, there's too many times we have church, we have it in a way that we always have had it in tradition. And we come together and we discuss the promises of God on how we're going to be blessed. We don't touch the world. We don't touch the sinners. Mm -hmm. They ain't interested in us. We got a language to ourselves and we mm -hmm. are ineffective as salt and light. Mm -hmm. But truly, Jesus came so we can be liberated from spiritual death, spiritual death, eternal death. So I always want to read this scripture because it talks about how we do have dominion over sin or sin no longer has dominion over us. You know, I hear all the time, and I'm almost done. I hear all the time that you got a sin nature. Everybody born after Adam got a sin nature. Oh, that, that sin is just spiritually translated from Adam, and everything is polluted. But when I read Amplified, and I think I've said this to the group before, what I see is nobody defeats the power of sin. The Bible says that Adam, one man, sin entered into the world. Sin has power. Sin has influence. The enemy uses its suggestions, and it has power. Nobody defeated sin but Jesus. And if we die in him, and that's what the scripture suggests, the only way for a man to get out from under the power of sin is to die. And we die in him. And the law of sin and death no longer has reign. Well, that helps me get myself together again when that, that emotion strikes. When I lost my mom and my dad, my so, 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 so forth. So just a couple of scriptures. Romans 5, 12. Therefore, as sin came into the world through one man, it's amplified. Death as a result of sin. So death spread to all men. No one, watch this, no one being able to stop it or to escape its power because all men said sin has power. And the only way for us to escape it is to die in Christ. And, right. and, and you know, when, it, when that whole thing comes around, when I'm praying in the spirit and all of a sudden peace drops on me, if I can remind myself that I've got a, a life that is eternal, that exists with him. And, and even before I get there, I got power over sin. I don't have to yield to sin because I've died already spiritually in Christ. Scripture I would jump to would be Romans 6, and I'll probably start. Let me see, what verse? Uh, maybe 11. Even so, consider yourselves also dead to sin. You know, when your wife, your husband dies, you no longer are under the law of your wife or your husband. Uh, consider yourself dead to sin because we died in Christ. Crucified with Christ, the blessed I live, the life of Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live in the faith of the Son of God. I've risen, I got a new nature on the inside of me. Watch out. All this spiritual information that is by what? Faith. Even so, consider yourselves also dead to sin, and your relation to it is broken. Sin don't have no dominion. I ain't going to pull my hair off. I ain't going to jump off no bridge. I ain't going to shoot nobody because mama go, you know? And if I keep on working in the spirit, all of a sudden that peace going to drop on me. I'll stop right there. I'll stop just right there. Y'all about to have me run through this living room right quick. Oh, this is, yeah. huh? <laughs> like, nah. ah, no, sin don't have no power over me right now. Amen. Broken. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Broken. I, um, one of the things, okay, this has been uh, outstanding. I want to extract something that was stated earlier. And I, I definitely chime in after I make the full point. It comes out of Acts chapter three. And I want to read it first. I want to tie it back into what was stated. It was um, three o'clock in the afternoon, Acts chapter three. And a certain crippled man from his birth was laying at the gate called Beautiful. Uh, verse three. So when Peter and John 
uh, was about to go into the temple, he asked them to give him a gift. Verse four, and Peter directed his gaze intently at him and so did John and said, look at us. And the man paid attention to them, expecting that he was going to get something from them. Verse six, but Peter said, silver and gold, money I do not have, but what I do have that I give you in the use of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And then they took hold of the man's right hand with a firm grip, raised him up. And at once his feet and ankle bones became strong and steady. And he began leaping forth and walking and praising God. And the people saw him walking about and praising God. And they recognized him as the man who usually sat begging for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement over what had occurred to him. So I want to pause right here because um, there's a couple things. Here is, let's be real, a believer. He was sitting at the gate because he was allowed certain accesses to the temple, but he was a believer who was not walking in, uh, there, was, there was an issue. There was, he was crippled. He required healing, but he was there doing what? Not in the position of authority. He was in the position of begging. Mm -hmm. And the word of God says in chapter four, that Peter directed his gaze intently at him. And we're discussing grief. We're discussing overcoming the spirit of grief. We're, we're discussing taking off that cloak. And there is, when you're walking with Holy Ghost, when you're walking circumspectly, when you have a sensitivity to the Holy Ghost, you have to be able to see people where they really are at. And Peter and John saw him. There were so many believers that were coming and going. In fact, they even made comment that that's where he usually be at. He's usually begging at that gate. So people were aware that he was usually there, but they saw him. And I lived in a city where it was just a huge population of homeless um, people out in San Francisco. And it can become part of the landscape, people begging all the time. That's mm -hmm. what you're usually doing every time I come by here. But to be able to walk, full of the Holy Ghost to see somebody, to be on your job. And I didn't know Trevon from anyone else that walked in that day, but there was light on her. There was glory on her. And you just know who needs, thing. you ain't gotta go into a full sermon and preach to somebody. It could be a smile, a hug, it could be love. You don't know what it is, but you are, you are on assignment even in your workplace. Mama. So ministry to those who feel like, Oh, you know, God doesn't have me where I'm supposed to be. I'm being overlooked or whatever. There is a ministry right where you're at to see people and meet the needs and be the arms of Jesus right there mm -hmm. to be the encourager to say, grab hold, look at us, grab yes. hold and let yes. me change and do a transfer of strength to you. And let me uphold you. That way you'll be strong and steady. And yes. And yes. That's a part of our job. And what I love is that when you keep continue reading through Acts chapter three, Peter says, are y'all marveling? Like this is the work of the Holy Ghost. This is him. He continued to point them where it needed to be pointed. This ain't even got nothing to do with me. I didn't do this. He did. Yes. And I think we just get in the way of all that and we just need to flow and let it be timely. And you know, I apologize because one time I, I mentioned to mom, I said, I think it was today, earlier today, mom, I said, um, uh, you know, leave them folks alone. You always saying this and saying that. And mom rebuked me and she went, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell it. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, tell Yeah, let me be mom. You be <laughs> your. <laughs> well, listen, she had me. And I, I got I to gotta, I gotta ask some questions. But I, um, I have to back away because he's the one that's present at that moment being the voice in the hands of Christ and being the hands of Holy Ghost to impart something that's needed right at that point. Mm -hmm. You don't know how that's life or death for that person right there in that moment. Absolutely. One, one, one word. One word. Right compassion. Go, you go ain't ahead. doing it like Jesus did. Yes. You don't have a heart for people. If you trying to condemn or put yourself in a position where you over somebody, you need to go have several seats. You know, oh, there is old, and you said it, Dad. When he said that, you know, you said um, we 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 need to be effective and salt and light. And it there's yeah. a lot of ineffective people walking around 
you know, I, I'm just going to leave it right, right there. But there, you I know, do. I, I had something else you want to add to that. I know, Dar, we haven't heard your voice yet. But yeah, I, I, do. To... I have something I want to add. Um, because I have um, been with Trevon, we have been friends since high school. Yeah. Um, and I had the honor to um, walk with her through this. Um, support her. With I, I'm just going to jump. I'm going to jump in and say, no, she, she went beyond just walking me through it. Um, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She was in the room with my mom when she made her transition. My mom, my mom put me out. Let me tell you that. I cannot tell Darnisha all the time. I'm a little jealous because she put me out and, and let her say, but I, I have my daughter with me and then she did not want us, uh, didn't want us to be there when she transitioned and we knew it was time. And, and Darnesia had the, uh, the, the forthright, the Holy Spirit put it in her yep. mind to yep. call me uh, so that I could still be a part. I couldn't be in a room, but I was still a part of that moment. And I Amen. wanted to say that again, speaking to the importance of, of community uh, when sure. you're going through going through yep. this. Amen. So um, one of the things that I really appreciate and value about Trevon is uh, very similar to the Stanley family. She is very honest <laughs> and uh, she don't mix words. And um, she is a hard, hardcore, you know, strong believer, but she allow herself to be vulnerable and honest. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. One, of the, one of the scriptures that came to mind was um, is in Proverbs 16. And um, it's verse starting at I'll start at verse 17. It says, The highway of the upright is to depart from evil, evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil of the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whosoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Happy Hallelujah. is he. Hallelujah. And she did not allow pride or I'm a long I'm a long time believer and I should know how to handle this. She didn't allow that to get in the way of receiving what she needed to get from Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. She didn't Shalom. pretend like everything was okay. Oh. You know, she wasn't prideful about the grief that she was going through. And yes, she allowed yes. herself to be transparent, not only with the things that we didn't hear, but things that she did share when the Lord released her to share. And this could be a point of pride. You know, you can go through grief it, with pride and pretend like it's a certain way. And Dad Stanley said earlier, there's no right or wrong way. And because, you know, I've experienced the grief of losing a mother, I've learned that everybody goes through it differently. And you cannot put a person in the box. Well, you still grieving? Why you still? You cannot yeah. do that. <laughs> I love about yeah, how Trevon wrong, has walked this out with Holy Spirit is that she's honest and she's yes. humble. And because of that, I believe that a supernatural grace and power from Holy, uh, an endowment from Holy Spirit was added into her to get her to this point. So I just wanted to add mm -hmm. that. Hey, man, I want to jump in here. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was listening to what Dara was saying, you know, about this pride thing. And I think sometimes our spiritual leadership in the church, maybe not realize it, but I think sometimes they encourage, I don't even know if I want to use the word encourage, but I think sometimes people pick up on this because they feel like they need to, that they're not in faith or they're not spiritually mature if right. they grieve. And grieving is it, natural. It's okay yeah. to grieve. But it's like people in, um, you know, in positions of leadership, particularly in the church, a lot of the times will master grief, they'll disguise, it, they'll hide it. And it makes people who sit underneath them feel like it's not okay to grieve. Right. And, it, and, and not all the time is pride. It's just that they've been taught wrong, you know. Correct. And so it's necessary for people to understand yeah. that grieving is natural. 
you know, the Lord talks about, you know, a contrite heart, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, yes. you won't deny. That yes, is a natural yes. thing. He is close to those that mourn. Um, so I, I, I was just kind of having that picture, you know, you, have, you see people who kind of go on to be with the Lord and it's almost like you don't miss a step. You just propose to just keep it moving um, because you're a Christian. But no, we're human mm-hmm. beings. We That's are Christians. Right. Yes, we do have the Holy Spirit to help us, to, to give us that peace that passes mm-hmm. understanding. But there, it's okay to have those moments uh, of sorrow. Even Jesus wept over um, yes. John the Baptist when he was beheaded. Lazarus. And that, that's a great example for us. Lazarus, friend Lazarus. You know, so that's it. Amen. Uh, can I say and that's something? that's so important. Go ahead, Mika. Let, let me say something. Uh, also, along with grieving, I find that... Um, relating to the word of God tends to heal me. You, you might want to get into, you know, just pick a, a book or something out of the um, Bible and just let those scriptures minister to you. Sometimes you can't speak words of how you feel on the inside to somebody else. And I always lean back on the word to help me heal it. And, and when, once I'm healed, I'm able to speak what I'm feeling to someone else to help them heal. So sometimes there's a point in your life when you're grieving, you can't explain it. But if you are re- just relying on the word of God to minister to your spirit, because that's what we have, the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us and to tell us what to do the next step in our lives then you are able to speak. Sometimes words are not there when you're grieving heavy. That's something I, I've learned to tell people, you know, I've got a word for you. Lean on that. Stick yes. with that. Bury yourself in it. And once you come out from that baptism of the word, you are able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Baptism of the word. Amen. I, yes. and, and may, may I just, and I, I'm so glad that you said that, that it, because that's so important. And I want to speak to this point very briefly, because again, when the heaviness is there, sometimes you find mm-hmm. it difficult to get into your word. Diff- I'm so glad we live in an, a day and age now where we have technology that mm-hmm. even when you cannot pick up the Bible and read for yourself, you there are so many apps there are so many Hello. different things where you can play the word of God because it says faith comes by hearing and yes. hearing by the word of God. You can still let it play while you're sleeping. My children slept with the word of God because they also were affected too. This just didn't affect me. It affected them as well. And my children were having nightmares. Um, my son had regressed and started wetting the bed again. It, it was, it, he broke out, uh, he was breaking out because of the stress because he didn't have the words, you know, Mm. he was four, four or five years old. He didn't have the words for the grief that he felt, you know, losing both of his grandmothers and both of his great grandmothers. He didn't, he didn't have the language just like you were saying, but we would play Mm. Psalms and the Psalms seem like it would just, it would give, give the language, the things that David wrote, that Moses wrote, you know, why, why, are, why are your why is your soul downcast? You know when mm-hmm. David is talking to him, so because because that grief is a pain of the soul, you know, mm-hmm. and that's only right. something that the Holy Spirit can reach. And so I I wanted to just put put that out there because somebody may be watching mm-hmm. and saying, well, I don't even have a desire to read the Bible. I can't even read the Bible. Then put the app on. Put something on where the Word of God is of, playing. Uh, audio. You <laughs> yep. You put the audio on. <laughs> And another thing, too, is hymns, music. The music that you listen to is so important. I turn to the hymns a lot, a lot. They they help me to refocus a lot. And so I also wanted to put that out there, that that the music that you listen to is going to be so important in how you even express the 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 grief that you you carry, the grief that you are processing, because it is a journey. And uh, Um. I want, so I want Trevon to close us out in prayer tonight. I, you know, I noticed that one of the other additional questions that I had um, got answered, but I just want to make it really, really clear. And anyone could speak on this before she closes us out. You know, there are people 
And I believe they have heard something this evening to assist them with getting uprooted out of their situation, but people get paralyzed. And just like that man at the gate, beautiful, they are paralyzed at that point of their parent dying, their grandparent dying. They have not moved past that point where they believe God took someone they love or they believe that he did not answer their mother or father's prayer or even their personal prayer. I saw people put things under posts that said, um, Jesus didn't save Kobe and those people. And mm -hmm. he you know, they said he was a believer, but Jesus left him hanging. And, and I just squint and it's just so much, um, you know, ignorance out there around who the Lord is and about death. And, um, you know, I know that there are people who I place the death of a loved one as an idol too. Mm -hmm. They are, um, and I don't know, I don't have enough you know, experience to speak very thoroughly on this. I've just watched how people will um, allow the death of someone to prevent them from moving forward and they're stuck. And it's just the same, they memorialize, mama said, mama said, mama said, right. and, and they can't get past mama and them and mama's gone. And, mm -hmm. and the whole family is held hostage under, but mama and but mama, and it's a, it's a constant, um, I don't know, it's a different kind of, it's not an honor in my opinion, it's, mm. it, they're paralyzed and, they're, and there's, I've seen other people who are, who isolate themselves and there's nothing wrong with pulling back and allowing Holy Ghost mm. to build you, but they're isolating going into a dark place where I know Satan wants to take their life as well. Yeah. And I've, and I've had these conversations and I, and I just prayed that Holy Ghost is able to get into those spots, but before, Trevon closes us out. Did anyone have any final words for people who may be struggling in that area? I don't know. I was just going to add to what you said. That there's also people who um, thrive off the attention that they get, you know, from having lost a loved one. And so they don't want to let it go because they constantly want to be able to, you know, pick the scab back off so they can get comfort from other people. But, you know, our comfort comes from Christ. We're talking about the comforter. Yeah. He is Hallelujah. everything that we need in ways that we don't even know how to describe in ways that we wouldn't Hallelujah. even know that we need it. You know, and so yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What you guys Can got? I, oh. Go ahead, I, I was just gonna say because I know I, I was trying to make sure I don't take much time because I know you asked me to pray. I would like to say this. It is totally natural to want people to be with you um, when you are going through what you're going through. When Jesus knew that it was his time to die, to offer himself up for us, he took friends with him, but they were unable to continue on in the journey with him. That's right. That's right. When I look at G because Jesus, the, the Bible tells us that Jesus is an example for us, for our suffering. Right. So when yep. I look at the life of Jesus, he, he took his three that, you know, with him, he wanted yep. them to be with him, but they fell asleep. And it says, you know, when he went further, you know, he, they, he brought them with them, but it, even before they fell asleep, it says that he went further. Because he was talking to his father. They would get to a point where, exactly. as, yes, you're going to have people around you, but you get to the point where you know can't nobody yeah. deal with what you're dealing with and carrying but the Holy Spirit. Nobody Hallelujah. can deal with it That's but it. him. And so I just want to speak to that because it is natural to want people, you know, and, and God will allow people to will come, but he's going to make sure that they don't, they don't stay in such a way that they become idols or they you become to a place you come to That's a good. place where you are uh, codependent he wants us interdependent because we are part of the body of christ so everything that we need is in the body of christ Hallelujah. but he doesn't want us to make someone or anything more important than he is he doesn't want anybody's voice to be more important than he is so that even even my mama you know, and I love my mother. My mother is the first 
law, if you will, of what I've known. She was the voice of authority. And when she was gone out of this earth, I began to realize how much I really did lean on her, even as an adult still. And I thought I was good and grown, married, kids and all that. But I really looked to my mother for a lot of approval, a lot of affirmation. And I will say this, the Holy Spirit said this to me and he was the one who had to say it because I promise you, if anybody else would have said it, it might have been a problem. And he said to me, (laughs) he said, if you Mm. still needed your mother for you to become who you are to become, that she would have still been in the earth. Her assignment was completed. (laughs) My, my. Her assignment was completed. And when the more I grasped hold to that, I was able to rejoice that her assignment as my mother was completed and my assignment to her as her daughter was completed because I walked with her through stage four pancreatic cancer yes, the, 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 as the Lord gave me direction by his grace. And when I look back, I don't have any regrets um, be- because he directed me to do particular things, to walk with my mother, to walk with my grandmother. The assignment has been completed. I don't know who is listening, but you have to realize that if God has allowed them to leave this earth, the assignment is completed. And if you are still here, then there is still an assignment and a purpose for your life. Amen. Well oh, said. Um, Dar, did you have something? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no I, I, I just wanted to say you talked a little bit about, um, you know, the blaming God piece. Well, well, why did God allow this? And I think that there are there are parts of, you know, a tragic loss that we can't explain out as believers. And I think that sometimes we attempt to say, well, you know, yeah, God didn't do that, but this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And I, you know, I just feel like sometimes you don't have to give an answer. Right. You just say, trust God, pray about it, seek him as the comforter and, and allow it to be that. And that's, that can be enough for people. And I, I think that this. sometimes we just try to defend and, and try to explain out something that's not explainable. How, mm, that's how good. That's good, that sis. That um, yeah, that's oh, I'm great. sorry. I know. I love that you said that because we can get real religious about it and be like, who sinned? Reason why she gone. <laughs> who sinned? Who missed God? And it's like, yeah. what? Remember we were in school and somebody that's wrote it? We, they were like, oh, we're praying for sister so-and-so. She's been attacking her body, going and signed the card out there. And somebody done wrote it in the card. You need to repent from what you, what? Man, if you, who wrote this? You know, it's <laughs> crazy. You I'm are out of order. Some Pharisee. Some Pharisee, yeah, Pharisee somewhere. Yeah, because that is that spirit. Sadducee. It's terrible. Ooh. And I, you know, <laughs> it is a lie and it's, it's ungodly is what it is. And I love that you said that sometimes you don't have to give an answer. Still make you know, yourself it's, good. Let God answer it for them. How about that? You know, but this has been a powerful Bible study. And I, my, my prayer is that many people will be set free who've been, uh, you know, where the devil's been kind of working them a one, two over in this area. And I'm glad that this timing was just perfect for it to come right on out tonight. Um, I, I thought it was perfect. I know that, you know, whenever we start New Year's, we all think that it's, oh, fresh start and oh, something new. Hey, you know, jazz hands. But there's a lot of people that come into the new year with a lot of hard memories. And there's a lot of deaths that happen right in that last holiday sprint. And it's just like back to back to back. And it's, it's tough. And uh, we want to be sensitive to that. And we have an answer by the Holy Ghost for it. And so, uh, again, I want to thank Trevon for joining us. And I'm going to just turn it right over to Sis to close us out. And, uh, and that's it. And praise God. Again, thank you all for having me on tonight. Amen. So, Father, uh, we continue to look to you. We thank you for this time to be able to discuss your word and to discuss the importance of who you are in our lives. Um, that you are not an afterthought, but that you deserve to be our first thought. You deserve the first of everything that we have, Lord God. We love you because you first love us. And Lord God, you are teaching us every day how to love you more and how to trust you more. Oh, for grace to trust you more. And Father God, um, 
if there is anybody who is wrestling with um, a loss, with death, um, and it doesn't always have to be a death of a person. Sometimes it's a death of a marriage, a death, a death Ooh. of a dream, a death of a of of a job, of a vision, Lord God, something that that they thought that you gave them, and now they feel like you've taken it away, or they feel like that that it, it did not reach its maturation. And 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 I know that when these things happen, there are a lot of questions. And I'm so glad, God, that you are big enough. You are strong enough to meet us uh, with these questions and that you don't reject us uh, from it. But there becomes a time, Lord God, where the questions become uh, from a place of, of a victim and you don't want us to be victims. You want us to know that we are your children and that where the place that we talk to you from is a, from a place of victory. It's not a place that we won on our own. There is not enough strength in us. There is not enough wisdom in us. There is not enough righteousness or holiness in us to even come from that place. But the place of victory we come from is because Jesus won the victory for us. It says in your word that death will be the final enemy that Jesus has triumphed. So even as we see and experience a separation from our physical bodies, Lord God, you said that those who are separated from their bodies are with the Lord. And so, Lord, we, those who have, have died knowing you, died professing you and, com and confess, Lord, we rejoice that they are now experiencing uh, the reward of their faith. And we thank you for that. But there are those of us that are, that are here that are still going through the process of, the, of this grief journey, Lord God. And I pray that you will strengthen them, strengthen them as they pray to you, strengthen them as they cast their care upon you, strengthen them, Father God, as they look to you, Father. You said, when mother and father forsake me, then will I pick you up. I thank you, Lord, for picking me up. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for not leaving me where, uh, where the enemy tried to, to use my time of, of sorrow and use my, my time of sadness uh, to try to attack me. You did not leave me there, Lord God, but you in every instant helped me to turn my heart to you, Lord. And that one day I would see the healing of your hands. And I know that there are many people asking when, when will this stop? When will the heaviness be lifted off of me? And Lord God, I don't know when that date will be, but I know that you are the one that says that to lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And you are that King of glory. We invite you into everything every area of our lives, every place that hurts, every memory that has been triggered by this, uh, this, uh, this week, by the announcements of, of, the, of the various deaths, all the tragedies and, and, and the, all the horrific details that have brought about any trigger, Lord God. I pray your healing power upon your people. I pray, Father God, that they will know you so intimately, hallelujah, that they would know you so intimately, God, that they would know that you are so intimately acquainted with everything that is going on in their lives. You said that your plans for us were good and they still, they're still they still good. Regardless of what happened, they're still good. You have not changed your mind about who we are to you and your plans that you have for us. They are still good and i pray father god that your your children we as your children can still see the goodness of your hand while we are yet in the land of the living and i pray that you will use us oh god to to be your ambassadors lord god to represent you in the earth lord that we will humble ourselves that we will share our testimonies share our stories of how you come in and rescued us and helped us and saved us Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit, our comforter, our helper, our corrector, 
we thank you and we pray this in your son Jesus's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that powerful prayer. Thank you, family. Um, this, oh, you had something, Dad? Unmute me. Yes. <laughs> uh, one scripture. Yes. You know, we talk about death and grief. And Jesus was about to lose God. He was about to die. God wasn't going to die, but he was about to die. Scripture is uh, Hebrews 5, 5, 7. It says, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up definite special petitions for that which he not only wanted, but needed. Jesus, Jesus needed to deal with this thing. He about to be separated from God. He about to die. If I would put it in my own words, are you really going to raise me up? No, let me out. But he about to be separated. Not only wanted, but he needed the supplication with strong crying and tears. And that sister said he bought his three with him, but they couldn't stay away. And he had to get what he needed from God. Supplication with strong crying and tears to him who was always able to save him out from death. And he was heard. Key word. God heard him and gave him what he needed to go yes. forth with this thing. But Jesus needed this. He wanted he needed some help in his flesh to go through with this. Always able to save him from his death. And he was heard because of his reverence toward God, his godly fear, his piety, and that he shrank from the horrors of separation from the bright presence of the Father. So you Come lost on. your mother, you lost your father, you lost your God. I mean, Jesus, this, this is an example right here. I mean, you know, this is an outstanding example. I'm about to lose Father God. I've been with him all along. I'm about to leave. I'm about to die. I'm about to be separated. And he shrank from the horrors. He called it horrors. Hmm. You know, some folks think about, you know, mom going, ain't gonna pay my bills. No, no, Jesus, this isn't just about paying bills. I'm about to, I've been with you throughout eternity past and I'm about to mm -hmm. give this up for the sins of the world so that you can have many more sons. Yes, ultimately, mm -hmm. he's the one that takes care of what we need to go through when we lose. Mom, Amen. did you have something? Amen. I know. No. Oh, yes, nope, yes. that was it. Okay. Good choice, man. Oh, well, no, that was that was outstanding. Uh, I think sometimes I love this study because we laid it out where you can eat, okay, and, and digest what we're saying. We didn't overcomplicate it. And I was talking to Dar recently. I, you know, you talk about the horrors. There's some assignments. There's some, there, everything is in roses. <laughs> you know, you're going to walk out some hard stuff. And I had watched um, a movie recently. It was Harriet. And we know the horrors of slavery. And how God was with this woman and how uh, she had an incredible assignment on her. And she, allowed, she just simply trusted God. And the things that she asked, it was just simple. It was, I need your help. That's it. I need your supernatural peace. That's it. She didn't get all deep. She ain't light a bunch, 50 candles. She ain't walk around in circles three times. Help me, Lord. That's it. And he helped. And there was a faith to receive what was already provided. That's mm -hmm. it. The hard stuff. And I mean, it's some stanky, hard, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. Whatever it is, I love that Trevon talked about it could be the death of a marriage, the death of a dream, all kind of stuff where you like, I thought this was going to work out differently. I had planned something else. <laughs> the death of all of that. <laughs> God is still in it with, and his word is not a lie. And that's it. You know, I still have a hope in a future for you and it's good. Come, come up here. Come keep your eyes on me. And so this word blessed me this evening. It was, it was um, a feast, but you're able to digest it, you know? And so until next time, Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, we're going to be chewing on this word. We encourage you to share it. I know that um, uh, Regina is going to be ministering on BWE. It's not this Monday, next Monday, right? Monday. So second next Monday. Monday, second Monday. And we know uh, Dr. Sherry would be back next week. And again, Trevon, anytime you let us know how you want to participate. We get wild sometimes. So you, you seem to match right on in. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, this was, it's, it's always, um, you know, we yield to what thus saith the Lord. And I know many people are being blessed. And so we love you until next week, family. I don't know if anyone had anything else. That's it. All right, we gone. All right, love you guys.